Chris, Sarah and Ben. We're on an Arctic adventure exploring the extreme north of Europe. Welcome back to Diamonds on Tour. last week when we were ice fishing at Kilvama. Far and Mikhail were so great and their campsite is tremendous. We've put a link to their Facebook in the description so that you can get in touch if you're travelling up this way at any time of the year. Now for us, we're heading further north. Today is to drive east towards the coast. We're heading towards a, a special treat in a couple of days' time, but today we're going to see something that should be quite spectacular. Now, uh, bear with us, and you'll see that just as soon as we get there. Back on the road today after that beautiful park up last night at the farm buildings next to that lake. Everything's next to a frozen lake up here. <laughs> um, we are less than 60 miles now from the Arctic Circle and it's, uh, it's still pretty snowy outside um, but we've got a stunning day of weather today. Beautifully clear, bright sunshine, two degrees centigrade outside. We've arrived at our next location. Can you see our van parked over there somewhere? Mm -hmm. And this is actually a very beautiful hotel. My new best friend. This is the Peter Pale Ale local brewery, named after the name of the river. The River Peter that goes down the Storfus and Rapids. There you go. It's quite small yeah. compared to Sarah's very large glass of IPA. And look at this. So there's a big frozen river, I think, with a fabulous bridge. And where's that going to take us, Sarah? It's going to take us to Stormsforsen. Storfjorsen. Storfjorsen. <laughs> Which we can actually hear from, yeah. from here. So come with us on this little walk and let's see what's just over that bridge. This one is stunning. Well, we're not there yet, but hopefully it is. <laughs> it better I mean, be. I, I've seen a little bit of it already wow. from the, when you were driving in. Fantastic. We are slightly better prepared for this walk today. Can you show us, Sarah? Yes. Look at these beauties. Oh, yes. Sarah's got her spikes on today. Fabulous. No slip sliding at all. No.
That is something else. Oh, wow. They say the best time of year to see this is in the spring. A bit before that, I guess, but we've got quite a thaw on at the moment. I think it was plus four degrees back at the van. So I'm thinking that's been fed. The river from 1858 was used to float logs downstream from, to the sawmills. The roads have now taken over that, but incredible. <laughs> Must have come down here to quite a place. Ben just pointed out there's not another soul here. Just got the whole place to ourselves. It is a Thursday, so I'm guessing at the weekend it's probably very popular, even in this at this time of year. Look at the ice structures at the side. Like works of art. a really healthy crop of trees and bushes around the uh, river it's all obviously being fed by the, the the water from the river which is amazing and we can see bird cherry mountain ash and uh, bushes from the willow family and we can expect apparently to see oh, this is if we're lucky elk reindeer black grouse hazel grouse and willow grouse. Nice. See that water just churning underneath that massive lump of ice. Astonishing. Well now then, what do you reckon? We know you like pictures of waves on the sea, Paul. How do you fancy sailing your boat down here? <laughs> It'd be pretty exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> winter they call that November and December this actually freezes even these rapids freeze and it freezes from the bottom up and then the water is forced out then onto the surrounding ground which then also freezes over what is the definition where do rapids become a waterfall? Or the other way around, where does a waterfall go less steep and become rapids? Must be a measurement. Yeah, yeah I think. It doesn't matter what you call them, they're incredible. <laughs> other natural inhabitants of this area are the red squirrel in the forests and in the water, the otter. Um, he's, he's here even in the winter, apparently quite amazing he can be seen we haven't seen him but he can be seen swimming over the rapids his main diet it are fishes called the burbot and the bullhead and he also eats frogs in the spring love to see that I'd love to see an otter what's the chances sign saying hazardous area do not enter no sh Sherlock
flow of this river varies considerably during the year. In the winter, the flow and water levels are low, but during the spring floods, and I guess we're seeing that some of that now, when the snow melts, water levels are high. So it will get higher, folks, it will get higher. The rapids at Storforsen are the biggest undeveloped rapids in the Nordic region, with a drop of 82 metres over five kilometres. In the final 600 metres of the rapids, which is the bit that we've shown you really, the river drops some 50 metres. The river Pitti is 400 kilometres long and it starts with Sweden's largest glacier. And I'm really not going to try and pronounce that but that's quite impressive. And then comes into this series of lakes called the Great Lakes. And then we can start to come down, 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 down. And we get to Storforsen where all the uh, rapids are. And then off then into the sea. Yeah, 1,040 cubic meters a second. A cubic meter weighs a ton. So that's over a thousand tons of water every second. That's a lot. Not really sure that this is going to do much good, but I guess it's the thought that counts.
<laughs> that looks bad, doesn't it? <laughs> Seriously, I only had a glass each. <laughs> so just going, uh, yeah, just going over here. Uh, I'm going to show you around the um, amenities, and uh, yeah, because this place is absolutely stunning. I mean, this is luxury, top end campsite. To use the little card to get in, so that not just anybody can get in here. You have to be a, a campsite person. This wonderful kitchen area, that, and there's two, one each end, full um, sized fridge freezer. There's even a dishwasher that you can use, and I. Um, cooker, full cooker with an oven, microwave, and then once you've had your meal, you can all sit in here around this rather smart table. Men's toilet is around here and shower, but I'm going to take you into the ladies, so come with me. So here we have a rather super duper um, toilet showers. Um, so the toilets are beautifully appointed with their own little hand sink. They provide you with hand towels, hand soap, hand steriliser. And then the showers, well we've got a nice area here to keep everything dry, so hanging up things. Also you can sit down and dry your feet. Um, I know that that's uh, something that Ben absolutely loves to do, so sit down to dry his feet. And here we've got the shower, straightforward shower, um, lovely warm water. One thing that you don't, <laughs> you don't see, I've never seen in anybody else's, is a sauna. So into the sauna we go, and how lovely is that? Cozy, cozy. Now I'm going to show you probably my favourite place. Come with me. Now then, my favourite place, the laundry. It's not really. Look at this. So we've got a um, washing machine and a tumble dryer. Sink area there for hand washing. Lovely space here for sorting out your washing. Even a, an ironing board and an iron. Now Sarah showed you all the laundry and the showers and all that nice sort of stuff. I get a special treat, which is that I get to show you this room, which is where you deal with your toilet stuff. It is very, very good. That is one of the best toilet disposal places we've experienced with a fabulous hose for washing things, hand washing and all the rest of it. So absolutely excellent, one of those things, and unfortunately, one of my jobs. <laughs> and there we are, the only van in the camping ground. I wonder why. Right then, one of our tasks, or more specifically, one of my tasks, when we're finished at a site, is to get down our Starlink dish. Now normally, it's, uh, it's dead easy, no issue at all, but uh, in the snow it is just a little bit more tedious. The plan for the summertime is that we're going to be permanently mounting this on the roof here, so the, the sort of tedium of putting it out when we arrive somewhere and putting it away when we, when we go will be removed. It will just always be there and always operating. With um, the snowy conditions, you can't tell this, but the surface of the dish is actually heated it senses the ambient temperature and if it thinks there's a risk of it freezing or snow settling on it it heats the surface so we still get perfect internet connection even in these conditions which is really cool so the first thing i'll do is i'll go on the starlink app and go down to settings and starlink and you slide this little thing across and the dish puts itself into the stow position. That cancels the uh, the data connection because obviously it's not pointing in the right direction now, but it gets it in the right position so that you can put it away in its little box. And now I think I've, I'm gonna need five hands for this next operation if I'm to be holding the camera at the same time. So I'm gonna carry this down the ladder. I don't wanna slip off here and break my neck in these snowy conditions. So join me back at the bottom of the ladder when we'll be on the ground.
there we go dish in hand open up the van and stick it inside all right one almost final task before we leave is to unplug the electricity now we don't normally have a electricity hookup but on this site we have and because we're going to be leaving the van for three days after today we wanted the batteries to be absolutely full now one little snag of being on a, a snowy place is that the wire is buried under the snow so I can unplug it at this end Up there and basically just trace the wire through the snow yep there it is one thing to be super careful with if you're using those the other spike things that we had on our shoes yesterday for walking on the ice if you had those on you could actually pierce through this cable and I suppose technically you could electrocute your feet um, if you uh, connected yourself to the power on a cable through your shoe spikes unplug from there and then into the back and then it hangs inside like that perfect that's that task done now I think we've got to empty the bins and fill up our water tank we're not going to show you walking up to the bins and throwing this in you know exactly what that looks like <laughs> Just need to fill it with water, so I'm going to reverse down here and uh, get it next to the tap. And this tap needs a adapter for the hose. This tap needs a smaller adapter, which luckily I have. And because this is one of those little square top things, this is one of those taps which automatically drains down. So it's got no water in it when it's off uh, to prevent for freezing. So we've got our little handy dandy key, which just goes on there like that. And there you go. Just run it for a few seconds. Close down here. Now because we don't have a filter system on the van yet, we use this uh, chlorine stuff to make sure the water is perfectly safe to drink. And that's dosed at 10 millilitres per 25 litres in the tank. Now I know that we've got a quarter tank left, so I'm going to use a 30 mil dose. We would just like to add that there has been absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever with the water that we've been um, provided with in all of these countries. Um, absolutely crystal clear, perfect water. It's just for us that we're more concerned about the tank and uh, what might be sitting in the tank and the, perhaps the pipe, the tubes that we sometimes fill up with. So uh, that's why we use the, uh, the chlorine solution. Um, no, nothing at all to do with the water. This is brilliant, this little syringe thing. And the little hose allows you to just squirt it in. Where did you get that from then? Uh, from Amazon. I get everything from Amazon. There you go. Tank dosed. And then I'll just run a little bit of water through the hose to clear out any which was left in from last time that might have got a bit stale in there. Connects onto the tank. So this setup is, um, that is an on off valve. And then this is a, a kind of an angle thing because what we found was that if you connect a hose directly into there, the weight of the hose pulling down was putting a lot of strain on this and um, it was gonna break eventually. So this little setup, I can control the flow of the water with that and that takes the strain off so the hose can just fall neatly down there. And we just turn the tap on and away we go and uh, fast forward 
to about five minutes time when we'll have 100 litres of fresh drinking water back in our tank. Well, what a difference 24 hours makes. You saw the weather as we arrived here at Storforsen yesterday. It was fabulous weather and we had a tremendous walk up to the rapids. Um, so we're heading east um, towards a city called Lulia today, where we're meeting some great friends of ours that we know from scuba diving. Well, thank you very much for watching. We really do appreciate you being here with us. Don't forget, like, subscribe, click that little notification bell and leave us some comments. We love to hear what you've got to say. And join us next week when we'll be exploring Lulio.